buck track here. Looks like a, a bigger buck. What is that? Skirmishing with a smaller buck. And it looks kind of like bigger buck one. To be expected. While I'm down here in the dirt, I want to I wanna talk about, uh, I'll call it a controversial issue. I'll start off by saying it was one that I used to subscribe to. See, I used to subscribe to the notion of climate change. I couldn't really de debunk it scripturally, not fully. And so I was one that, uh, that wasn't really against it and I wasn't really for it. I was kind of in between, didn't have enough evidence to uh, really get thinking about it until the government came down with some regulations on farmers and farm tractors. And the new farm tractors, in order to meet the regula regulations to eliminate basically carbon dioxide out of the emissions, they added something called diesel exhaust fluid, which is basically a fertilizer that basically eliminates carbon dioxide out of the exhaust and replaces it with nitrogen N2. But it makes up roughly 78% of the atmosphere, it's 78% and change. While carbon dioxide makes up zero, zero point zero four percent of the atmosphere. And what we're replacing the carbon dioxide with in our exhaust is nitrogen, N2, which makes up almost 80% of the atmosphere. But when you look at the specific heat of these two elements, these two, they aren't elements, they're compounds, they it doesn't really add up. See, the specific heat of carbon dioxide is much lower than the specific heat of nitrogen, N2. And specific heat, for you, those of you who don't know, it's just a, in simple terms, it's a way of measuring the heat holding capacity of a substance. So the specific heat of nitrogen is almost 30% higher than carbon dioxide. And they're worried about global warming so they're getting rid of the carbon dioxide and adding nitrogen. They're, they're emitting nitrogen instead of carbon dioxide. You see, the atmosphere makes up almost 80% nitrogen, which has higher specific heat than carbon dioxide. It seems to me that if a scientist or the government was worried about global warming, they'd be emitting a whole lot more carbon dioxide and getting rid of the nitrogen. But I'll, I'll say this much. I'm not a scientist in my understanding of that point may not be fundamentally, or may not be completely sound, because I'm not a scientist, I'm a poor farm boy. But what I know is a little common sense sheds a whole lot of light on many things. And when I started thinking about it even more, the whole concept of a carbon footprint is a trap of Satan. It's a trap completely. Before I get to that, I know I'm going to get, hear things that it's not just carbon dioxide that's causing the problem, it's methane and other greenhouse gases, which greenhouse gases to me are inaptly named, but because a greenhouse gas is any gas that's inside a greenhouse, which is just normal air. But anyway, methane is another big problem, which methane does have a high specific heat, but the problem is when methane gets warm, it has a tendency to break down relatively quickly, which is why it has remained relatively low in concentration in our atmosphere. It's roughly, I forget, something like 1.7 parts per million by volume or something. So methane is in very low quantities and it breaks down in the atmosphere. I think they say it takes nine years, but I highly doubt it. See, methane's relatively unstable and it wants to break down into the more stable elements of carbon dioxide and water, which it does, I think, relatively quickly. It it basically it oxidizes just like the metal on your car body or frame and it turns into water, H2O, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. So that whole notion about greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide not being the, the biggest problem isn't really... Uh, to me, they're always preaching carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide's problem. Get rid of it. Carbon dioxide's problem. The whole notion of carbon dioxide and your carbon footprint being a problem is a trap of Satan. 100% a trap. Just think about it. So let's, let's assume that you manage to make your home 100% carbon dioxide free. 
like energy efficient. Like you've got solar panels that power everything in your home. All your power comes from solar. Everything in your house runs on power from wind generators or solar panels or you drive an electric car. You don't burn any fossil fuels. Good, I'm all for that. It saves a lot of money. I have no problem with these things. It's efficient. I have no problem with efficiency. So let's, let's just assume you do this and you manage to get carbon footprint neutral on that grounds. Well, then you realize the food you eat comes from a farmer who drives a diesel tractor and you can't have that. So you got to find a way to either bring out the horsepower from good old fashioned horses or do it the old fashioned way in your own garden with a hoe and manually weed everything. And let's just assume you manage to get all your food grown without any fossil fuels. Let's just assume you can do that which I'm not opposed to doing that either. I have nothing against people who want to grow their own food. So you come to realize that when you need to grow your own food, you gotta have a whole lot of different things. So in order to get most of the spices and you want milks and cheeses and all that, you need to have animals, but wait, you can't have animals because animals fart methane. So you gotta scratch them off the book somewhere. And then you come back to the notion of every other tool you use is probably, you know, it's like a plastic or it took some type of fossil fuel energy in order to make it. But let's just assume you can get rid of all that and go 100% fossil fuel free, no carbon footprint. Let's just assume you can do that, which once again, I'm not entirely against. You soon realize that by eating the food you grow in that garden that's 100% carbon footprint free, that by eating it, you start farting out methane, that you can't eat it. Suddenly, you can't eat the food that was grown the right way because you fart out pollutants. Well, then you come to the conclusion that, wait, if it's coming out my butt, it's probably coming out my nostrils. Every breath you take, every breath emits pollutants, carbon dioxide. You cannot breathe without emitting this. Not even in the slightest. You can't take a shallow breath or a deep breath. Both of them pollute, pollute the environment by emitting greenhouse gases. So how do you get rid of this? You see, this is the exact conclusion that Satan wants to come to. So how do you get rid of it? The only logical conclusion to solve this problem is to get rid of people. That's what Satan wants you to believe. He wants you to believe that your problem, he wants to take your hope from you by telling you this lie. See, the only way that this carbon footprint problem is solved is by mass suicide. Not just you suicide, everyone. Everyone dying on a mass scale because that's the only way to stop this carbon footprint problem, this whole carbon problem. And it's a lie. I tell you truly, Satan is a liar and a murderer from the beginning. And God doesn't want this. God wants to give you hope. Jesus Christ wants to give you hope and mercy and blessing. He wants to give you freedom. Freedom. Freedom from darkness. He wants to give you hope and a future and life and life more abundant. You see, I, I don't think people who subscribe to this notion of climate change are stupid. I don't think the scientists that believe it are stupid. I don't. I think they're deceived. And I, I feel sorry for them because I want them to know the truth. Because Jesus told us the truth would set us free. You see, people who subscribe to a lie, such as this trap of carbon footprint, there's darkness in their hearts. And their eyes are shielded by a veil of darkness. And I, I feel bad for them. I, I want them to know the light. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the light. The hope he stands at the door and knocks. And anyone who opens the door to him will dine with him. And Jesus will die. So he's longing to be gracious to you. He's longing longing to give you hope and a purpose. You have purpose. See, Satan wants to take that purpose and that hope and completely crush it and obliterate it with any lie possible. See, I, whether or not the climate is changing, I, I can tell you this. 
that spiritual climate change will destroy the earth infinitely sooner than greenhouse gas climate change. See, the reason nobody is caught on to this is because common sense is quite a fleeting thing in this day and age. Nobody takes the time to stop and think, but you see, the reason nobody has common sense this day and age is because fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't fear the Lord, you don't even have the beginning of wisdom. That makes you less than a fool. See, you, you can't have common sense without fear of the Lord. It's because common sense comes from the Bible. That's where it comes from. Look at it. Our laws, our moral laws, our ethical laws, our, the Ten Commandments, everything about the Bible screams common sense. But believing the Bible ain't so common anymore, so nobody has common sense. But I tell you, common sense comes from above. So, as far as this whole carbon footprint, carbon dioxide being a problem, greenhouse gas, climate change destroying the earth. I'm drawing the line, but the Lord has established it. The whole notion is a trap. Don't fall for it. You have purpose. The Lord loves you. You. And he wants you to have hope and a future. And I'm telling you, this is a, this whole CO2 carbon footprint thing is a lie designed to get you to lose hope and to lose purpose and to feel like you are nothing. And I tell you, you are not nothing. You have value, you have purpose, and the Lord wants you to find it. Seek Him, and you will see. Let's go hunting. Shit.